Pastor Debbie and I believe that you won't be disappointed. Because we believe that tonight, just like this morning, that uh, it is important. That, you know, God has messengers. We see both in the Bible and, you know, there's, there's modern day messengers. Of course, no one can speak on the authority, the same authority as the Lord Jesus Christ unless we speak His Word. Amen. Praise God. And then the, the apostles and the, and the prophets, they're both Old and New Testament. But how many know that God still, His Son Jesus Christ, died and He rose again from the dead and He gave gifts unto men? And He has modern day ministers. Amen. Praise God. With messages sent to the earth. Amen. From His heart. And I believe that Miss Baxter is one of those, has a, a wonderful testimony of her. And we won't um, take any more of her time. But we, I just want to introduce her again and let her know how much we really appreciate her to be with us tonight. Amen. Would you do that? Thank God. Amen. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you. We love you. We love you. We turn it over to you. Well, good evening, everyone. How many were drunk today after you left church? Wow, we were so under that fire of God this morning, and he's going to be here tonight. Uh, my name is Mary Kay Baxter, and I live in Florida, traveling almost, well, I guess, 23 years all over the world, 128 nations, and I've got all kind of books God gave me of the supernatural I wrote under the anointing, and they're translated, some of them, the hell book in 128 languages in the world. And I've been to many nations where they translated my book, and they, they really changed their lives. Their eyes come open, and they realize there's a hell. So tonight I'm going to be sharing with you about hell and give you some scriptures. And we're going to show a little part of Bill Weiss and I did 14 years ago in California, a documentary, just parts of it, not a whole bunch. And Pastor will have them available for all the church later to purchase. And these uh, scenes that you're going to see are really in hell. So tonight I don't want you to be afraid. I just want you to understand there's mysteries and revelations to give to us. And God does not want it held back from his children. Amen. And if we believe the Bible, we believe in the supernatural. If Almighty God can take a bone out of a man and make a woman, who do you think we're serving? Who do you think God is? How big is God? If Almighty God can speak this world into existence, how big is our God, sweetheart? How big is he, Pastor? He can make the dust from the ground and make a human being. And he breathes into his mouth, he becomes alive, a living soul called Adam. How many times I have traveled and met remarkable men and women that have these kind of revelations. From the beginning of time, creation, until the end of the war, these men have seen revelations of how God spoke and things was done. And out of his mouth comes a living power that saturates the earth and the mist comes, the garden comes, because he's God. He's God. The very dust on your shoes, God created a man from that dust. Amen. And then he put him to sleep and he, he's the first surgeon in the world and took a rib out of man. You men have one less rib than us woman, women. You know that? How many knew that? You didn't know that, did you? You did, didn't you, honey? And, and that, that's because we came, we're bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. See, God knows what he's doing, right? And so we're serving a mighty king. And tonight, I'm going to share with you some revelations that will just shake you. You're going to cry. You're going to weep. And how many have ever heard a testimony of hell? Raise your hand. Okay, quite a few. And doesn't it kind of shock you like an electrical shock when you really think of someday we really are going to die. We're going to leave this earth if God permits. Amen. And some of us are going to be, we're praying to be raptured, right, guy? <laughs> Do you realize there's churches that teach there's no rapture? Churches that teach Jesus is never coming back, sweetheart. Amen. I mean, it is serious. Our Bible is our rock. Our Bible is what we live by. From the time I was a little girl, prophets and apostles spoke to me, my mandate and my calling. And then Almighty God 
uh, spoke to me as if he appeared to me in a human form in 1976. I was saved. I had the Holy Ghost. I had a house full of children for the Holy Ghost. And I was not crazy. I did not die. I was told what would happen to me. And I was told Jesus Christ himself would manifest himself to me. And I used to pray in the services in Ephesians. God show me great and mighty things I know not of. I was always curious. I always was on a, uh, wanted to see God heal the sick, raise the dead. Prayed for animals on a farm. We had a 500-acre farm in Tennessee. And I would love to pray for the animals. And God would heal the dogs of mange. He would heal the little rabbits. I mean, he was God. And I grew up under wanting to see God do something to change this world. I wanted a dream to come true. I wanted to, when I was 12 years old, I had a dream of a war, a big war. And on one side of the fence were soldiers, all dressed in army uniforms, laying and bleeding and dying. Only a few people were bandaging them up. And I was on this side of a fence, and I had a nurse uniform on. And I thought, well, I guess I'm going to grow up to be a nurse and help all these wounded soldiers. And the more I was with God, the more he talked to me. He said, my wounded soldiers are ministers, evangelists, teachers, preachers. They're on the front lines, and they're wounded. They're dying, and who really cares about them? He said, these big eyes, everybody wants to be the big eye did this, the big eye did that. God said, I'm going to strip them. I'm going to strip down back to the old holy pathway. I'm going to bring my church back to the holies of holies. I'm going to bring my people to a place they're going to know I'm God. Oh, my. Let's pray. Father, we bow our heads tonight as we open up the book of Revelations. As Lord, I give it a, you honor, praise. God, just use me tonight. Take me over and show me your heart tonight. Oh, my Lord, for I'm looking for pearls of a great price, saith God. Pearls of a great price that will lay their life down for me. I don't mean to leave your families. I don't mean to go crazy. I mean, will you really lay your life down for me? Will you wake up and pray when I asked you to? When I knock at the midnight hour, will you awake and get your Bible and come and dine with me? I'm looking for people that will hear me again. I'm looking for a people that will arise and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. You see, I am searching now, and my eyes are over you. And tonight there is a cloud of witnesses. They're all in a balcony. Your ancestors that went on before you are looking down tonight. They're looking in the church. And there is a great cloud of witnesses above you. For this is the night the Lord has made. And you will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Father. We're going to go to the first the book of uh, Ezekiel 32, chapter 32. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you what. Uh, Ezekiel, me. Oh, the Holy Ghost is here. We welcome him, don't we? Let's welcome in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Young men and women, let's welcome him in. Lord, all of us just pray your own way. We welcome in the Holy Spirit. Open up our blinded eyes. Take away the darkness from our hearts. Open up our minds and take the scales from our eyes to see tonight. Let there be a revelation given to the church tonight that will shake us, that will awake us and make us care again, God. Make us care for our brothers, our sisters. We, we thank you for that, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, my Lord. What are we going to do, children, when we stand before God? When all's said and done and the judgment seat is set and we're standing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, what are we going to give him? What are we going to lay at his feet? Are we going to say, I'm afraid to talk about Jesus, the very man that hung naked before the whole world for you? We have a king and a God that's a real warrior. He, he's not shy and he doesn't hide. He comes with mighty angels tonight to show you his majesty. I hear him say, pa Pastor Chris, his majesty is going to show up. His majesty, not ours, but his. And there's a time and a season, God said, for his word to cut you deep. And tonight is your night. 
There's a, there's a sword in the land of the word of God that's been laid down. And tonight we take that sword up, sweetheart, and we just open up God's word. Here in Ezekiel 32, it talks about worms on your bones. It talks about hell. Ezekiel 32, I saw it in hell, graves, big high walls of caskets in them. I saw uh, souls laying in the casket could still talk. They could still remember the earth and how they heard the prophets. And here I'm going to read it to you, Ezekiel 32. And we're going to start at, at um, oh, wow. Well, wow, well, verse 23. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit. We're talking about the pits of hell tonight. What are the pits, children? Far beneath your feet is a huge, huge carved out place. It's like a human body on its back, honey, with sections of every part of this body is sections of fire, sections of demonic torture to eternal soul. And this is what the prophet saw, Ezekiel. And he said, their graves are set in the sides of the pit. And some of them are deep holes. Some of them where I'm sitting over to the wall is like a cavern. And on the walls in the mud are caskets stacked on top of each other. And this is what the word says. And the company is round about her grave. And all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. Today, we have so much terror in our land. The false doctrines, the false teaching, hell is filling up. Because the youth are dying and going to hell. They're committing suicide. People are going crazy in the jails. The jails are so full of people, they don't know what to do with them. Do you hear me? That some of them are so wicked and so mean because demons have possessed them. This is true. And it said, then yet there's God's army. The wounded soldiers had to be raised up. And look what the word says. They caused terror in the land of the living. And there's Elam and her multitudes around about her graves. All of them slain by the sword. Look at this. This was the old days. And which are gone down, see, down to hell uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth. I'm trying to prove to you what I'm saying and telling you Jesus showed me is true. Wow. Which caused their terror in the land of the living. Yet they have bore their shame with them. They go down to the pits. When you go down to hell and you're placed by demon powers in places of your lifetime of the sins you committed without repenting, there's hope on the earth. There's hope. You know, we repent and God makes us overcomers. But if you don't repent, darling, you keep lying. Oh, I never lie. And you're just lying all the time. And, and you are. And you cause problems in your family. You cause manipulation. God is saying, stop it. Because there's a place in hell for manipulators. My Lord, I feel its presence. And to the nether parts of the earth, verse 24, which caused terror in the land of the living and they've borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They have set her in a bed of the midst of the slime with her multitudes. Her graves are around him, and all of them uncircumcised, slain, slain by the sword. Again, they caused terror in the land of the living. And then they bore their shame with them that go down into the pit. So who's he talking about? He's talking about people like us. You'd be walking and talking and alive on the earth. He's talking about them that hid their sins from the commandments of God. And back then, you better thank God that we have Jesus Christ. You would die. You didn't have a second or a third chance. You didn't know that. When Jesus came, he changed that old covenant unto the new covenant where we have many chances. And yeah, even the priests would drop dead. People, we are really blessed that God loves us enough to give us his son. I'm serious about that. Sweetheart, we got to think who this God is. Think how big he is. And did he, let's look at uh, verse, uh, I want to go on down. They're all talking about the pits and the graves. But verse 27. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen in, of the uncircumcised. The uncircumcised in those days was people, which we know the history. But they did evil things. They would not listen to the prophets and the apostles. And you got to believe this. There was a, a testimony of a man 200 years ago, that was a horse thief. 
horse, stole horses. He died and he went to hell for stealing horses. I'm serious. I read his testimony. And what happened, God had mercy on him and brought him out of hell. He was a slave. And what happened, he didn't tell his story for several years because he was afraid they put him in a mental institution. And he actually was down there burning with the thieves, getting ready to be, you know, really burned forever and ever. And somehow God brought him out. And he testified and wrote stories about it. How he was a weak horse thief. Have you guys ever stole a horse? For real, guys, is it, what, have you ever stole a horse? But we steal other stuff. See, he's trying to get our attention. So let's look at this. They are fallen. They've all gone down to hell with the weapons of war. They've laid their swords upon their heads. But their iniquities, that's their sins, shall be upon their bones. Though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. So... We're going to find out what the terror is tonight. We're going to find out what the worms are tonight. Well, and we're going to, can you read that whole chapter later? It all has talks in about pits of hell. Can, can we do that? Pull it up on your internet, on your cell phones. You'll be shocked how the word of God, the power of God is not being preached like it should be. You t it wouldn't do me, but one service would straighten me out. I'm serious. I was so hard-headed, and I knew better, and God, boy, he showed me hell way be after I was saved and full of the Holy Ghost, because if he'd have shown me hell before, I probably wouldn't be here. I'm serious. We got to realize God is so good and so faithful that he's wanting to tell us in this holy word what hell is all about. Let's go to Luke chapter 16, verse 19. That's a rich man in Lazarus. It says, shows you can talk in hell. You can remember your family while you're burning in hell. You can, uh, children, this is real. This is Jesus Christ teaching. Jesus is telling us and warning us. Wow. Well, wow, you feel his presence. He wants us to wake up. It says chapter 16 of Luke, verse 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen. Otherwise, he was wealthy, fared sumptuously every day. And then there was a beggar named Lazarus that laid at his gate full of sores. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, they are those kind of buildings and gates. And look what happened here. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. He was so poor. And anyway, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass the beggar died because he kept the commandments of God. This is before Jesus went to the cross. He was carried to a boat called Abraham's bosom. And in this abode, you could see from Abraham's bosom down to hell. But the people in hell could not come up to Abraham's bosom. And the people that were in uh, uh, hell could not come up to Abraham's bosom because they did not keep the Ten Commandments God gave Moses. But this is talking about before Jesus went to the cross. He's telling you what's going on here. And this is in red. Okay? Verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels. Look at that. Your souls are going to be carried by angels to heaven. Your little body's going to be buried in a grave. And someday that body's going to be raised. That's another mystery. The graves are going to bust open and you're going to get a brand new body going up. Wouldn't you love to see that, y'all? Well, we're going to see it, right? And, and let's look at the word of God. Oh, my goodness. Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and he was buried. Now, here's a wealthy man thought he could buy everything. And it's not wrong to be rich. God wants you to have money. God wants you blessed. He really does. And let's look at this. Verse 23. And in hell... He lifted up his eyes. Can a dead man see? Yeah, you have a soul. If you go to a funeral, that body can't get up and praise the Lord, can it? He cannot get up and go shopping with us again, can it? What happened to that power and ability to move and talk and breathe? It's called your eternal soul. You have a, a body, soul, and spirit. And so here's what God is saying to us. And in hell, this rich man 
lifted up his eyes, he could see in hell. He wasn't blind. And he was in torments. Torments are the worms on your bones, babies. Torments is fire coming around your feet, coming up over you like a cloak, and old rotten flesh melts down, and it grows back, and then God's word, the scriptures are written around you. Lovers of your own flesh more than God's commandments. Things you never dreamed. They scream a skeleton and pull the worms out. The fire never kills the worms, and they feel that. They feel the worms, and they're screaming for death, and death don't come. You talk about eternity, we don't never want you, your family, your loved ones to go to hell. You hear me? I don't care if they laugh at you, you don't worry about it. They laughed at our God. And then look at this. And seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. This is God's word in action. He saw it. He felt it. He remembered the commandments of God. Now look what he says. He cried. He had a voice. And he said, Father Abraham... Have mercy on me, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Now hold it here. He saw Lazarus in a human form, didn't he? You couldn't talk, could you, honey, to a vapor of smoke? He saw Lazarus like he did on the earth. Think about it. Lazarus was preserved. You hear me, babies? You see? So the rich man is burning, and he wants one drop of finger of water to come on his tongue. He had a tongue. The, the corpses in hell that walk and talk and scream, they're in there if they were uh, in, I'll go to Galatians in a minute, the works of your flesh. And that's another lie that's being told. We never have to repent for the works of our flesh. Oh, yes, you do. Don't let the devil lie to you. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to hell for you or anybody. I made up my mind. Dear God. Now think about this, guys. This is God's word. And then he said, for I am tormented in this flame. If you're down there burning in a pit of fire and you look over at a person, you don't know if they're, you know, you can't tell if it's a man or woman until they speak. And, and they become your neighbor for 50, 60, 100 years burning and screaming. And they try to climb out of the pits and demons laugh and shove them back in. In hell, the demons are real. They're not invisible. They're very visible. On the top of the earth, they're invisible. A answer that question. I don't know. There's suicide demons in hell that climb up a spiritual pole like a telephone pole. They knock each other off to get up here to sing to you when you're depressed. They sing to the children. They tell the youth, kill yourself. Kill yourself. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares for you. And the worst word, the devil says you're no good. How many's heard that? How many's heard it? It's a lie from the devil. You have a purpose and a destiny with God, every one of you. You tell that devil to shut up and get off of you. The blood of the lamb has made you clean. <clears throat> in hell, those demons fight to get up. And there's droves of kids that are committing suicide in L.A. A few months ago, they were jumping in front of the subway, uh, the cars. At night, the trains, they were getting chopped up. You hear me? 14, 16-year-old children. You just don't know. I've been to the homeless shelters, guys. I've been to the Dream Center. I prayed for kids that have been on the streets full of drugs and needle marks and cuts on them. They have no hope. They live in the parks in the streets. They have no hope. Clayton, I've known Clayton 30 years. Clayton gets his car and van and he fills it full of the homeless. He takes them to McDonald's and feeds them. He loves them. He got to work in the Dream Center. He had a big section there when it first opened. He had me, he brought me in to speak to about 200 youth off the streets. I'm talking about kids that <clears throat> would jump off of cliffs, big buildings to kill themselves and their bones would break. I'm talking about them with no hair, no teeth. Kids, you hear me? Young people. And they and they, Clayton made them feel loved, and then he got the men to go and the women to go. He has a huge ministry for the youth in L.A. now. But in the beginning, it was just him and his wife. In the beginning, nobody wanted to go with Clayton. He'd go and stay all night in the park picking up the homeless and leading them to Jesus Christ. He's a great man. One of the greatest men in my eyes is Clayton. Wow. 
And this is what we got to have a heart like that to win the lost at all cost. Amen. <clears throat> and look at the word of God. Here's the rich man still talking. And, and then Abraham speaks, verse 25. Abraham said, son. Okay, guys, let's, where did Abraham come from? How long has Abraham been in, in the bosom? I mean, it's his bosom. It's his domain. It's his territory. How long had Abraham been dead? How many scholars we have in here? You guys know how many years? How many, Pastor? Two, yeah, Abraham. It's God's word's alive, isn't it? They will go and wait in Abraham's bosom till Jesus goes to the cross. Then they'll be delivered and conveyed to heaven. Ooh, glory to God. And besides all of this, Abraham, anyway, excuse me, he's talking to him. He said, son, remember, you do not have amnesia in hell. You remember every lie you told. You remember every person you hurt. Sweetheart, you remember how you kept working, serving your flesh. You remember, it's always with you. <clears throat> that, the life, that in your lifetime you receive good things and likewise rather evil things. Now he's torment, comforted and dire tormented. And then he talks about a gulf between them, which we talked about. He said, you can't come up here, verse 26. And he said, neither can they pass to you that would come from here. Verse 27, then he said, this is the rich man, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. I have five brothers. I don't want to come to this place. And then he corrects him. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. But you see, I never died. I was very much alive when God showed me hell. I'll never forget the night he appeared to me in a human form and told me my mandate and my destiny. And he said, I'm going to take you, Catherine, on a journey, three hours a night for 30 nights. He was very tall. He was full of power. He had beautiful hair to his shoulders. He had blue eyes. Out of him flowed the fruits of the Spirit. There was colors coming out of him like that power and glory <clears throat> and you drop to your knees and you'd say what can I do for you Jesus and he's telling you he's telling you your life he's telling you what you're going to do he's telling you in the day appointed I will send you all over the earth and you're looking at a king of kings in royalty white beautiful kind of like pastor shirt he's got on pure white glistening with light and it's so gorgeous and you're thinking this is Jesus so you drop to your knees and you start worshiping him. And after you worship him a while, he takes you by the hand and lifts you up. And all the time you're thinking, did I sin today? Did I do anything wrong today? And you're repenting. And he would tell, no condemnation. <clears throat> and then he says, Catherine, you're going to go with me three hours a night for 30 nights. It was right before Easter. It was in, it was in uh, March. Yeah. The March, it was uh, 30 nights, March and April. He said, I'm going to take you with me among the dead, and I'm going to show you truths that will shake the nation. He said, what you're going to see, you're going to write in a book and make records. And said, well, I will get it published all over the world. I will put it in, the, in many languages, and there will be a movie made out of it. We're working now with movie producers that work with a passion. Next year, we're doing a, they're doing a movie. They're doing it called Eternity. And they want 10 scenes of my new book. It's coming out in May called The Deception of Satan. And in that new book, comes out in May, they're going to take scenes out of that book and show it to the world with a movie called Eternity. And <clears throat> that's God. His word is being fulfilled. But I never dreamed it'd take this long, you know, but it did. But when you, Jesus is standing there, and you're thinking, well, Lord, I read about hell, and I'm thinking in my heart. And he says, peace be still. He tells me, peace. And he says, child, I will take you, I will translate you. Your body will stay here in your home <clears throat> with angels. Your children, your family will be safe, and you're going to come with me every night, three hours a night. And I'm going to take you on a journey in the middle of the earth is where hell is. Hell has mountains of fire. And if you guys want to get one of those pictures ready, hell has uh, degrees of judgment. Hell has cliffs of fire about a half a mile high where souls are thrown down into flames. 
Hell has, uh, he told me, they have rivers of blood. They have rivers of uh, muck and demons. And he's telling me all this. He said, there are snakes in hell, big as locomotive trains, that will hit the earth when my church is gone. And I said, dear God. He said, I'll be with you, but a few times you're not going to see me, but I'll be there. But he said, you must take this revelation to the world. And it's written in the word of God. And uh, he said, now when you see these things, you're going to be afraid, but I'll be with you. He said, we're going to walk where angels fear to tread. He said, we're going to go. And he said, look at my left hand. He had a ring of keys, a ring of keys. He said, I have the keys of death and hell. I can go down there anytime I choose. He said, I took them from Satan. And when he got done telling me my mandate and my destiny, and he kept telling me, Pastor, in the time appointed it will be. You know, and in our natural mind, we think it's the next day, but it's not. But <clears throat> what he did, excuse me, he got done talking to me. It was 2 in the morning. I don't know what time when he got done talking, but he explained to me the word of God. He said, now when we go, I'm going to take you by your hand. You're, and then he said, your body's going to lay there like it's asleep. And your eternal soul will go with me. He said, I'll go in my, the fleshly part. He said, I'm going to look fleshly to you. That's what he told me. He said, look at my hands. Now, the nail prints were here and here. Scars, nail prints, okay? And on his feet, the top of his feet, there was big scars. He showed me he had sandals on. He said, uh, now, at times in hell... And I'm telling you things I've never told. This is in the new book, if they're going to do the movie. Up. His feet in hell, the blood would come to the top of his foot and would run down, and, and it'd disappear. When he'd hold my hand and weep over souls in pits, that blood would come into his hands, and he would cry. Jesus cried so much. His love is beyond you could ever imagine. And he said, Come and see and hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He said, my people need to be awake. So he reached his hand out to me. My soul come out of my body, and I stood beside him, just like he said. And he, had my, he took my left hand. And he said, in the future, me holding your hand all through hell, I will give you a gift to create a miracle. You will pray for teeth that will grow in. You will. He told me, you'll do different things but only by my power, never your power. And he said, I want you to know something. He said, you're going to be shocked. You're going to cry a lot when you see hell. And he said, I'll raise up others that see hell in the future. Bill Weiss is one of my dear friends. Theo Dinez, a Navajo Indian, saw hell. Marvin Melvin saw hell, a police officer. And we've all at times worked together. And <clears throat> in California and in Texas and everywhere, but, sweetheart, there's always a humbleness with us. Because when you see a skeleton in hell talking to you that knows they used to be like us on the earth, there's something, so much compassion, you cannot, you cannot contain it. Because you're thinking, what if I was backslid and I died? This is where I'd come. You talk to backsliding preachers in hell because they never told you the truth. You see them burning. Some of them are on meat hooks in hell. Hanging. You hear me? Some of them are in vats of fire, wrote in the abominations of desolation, standing in the holy place it should not. False preachers, false teachers that don't care about your soul. It's real, guys. It's not a fairy tale. And so he says to me, come. And pastor, my soul came right out and stood beside the Lord. I looked at myself. <clears throat> I could see through myself. And I, I was amazed. And I had a real hand, you know, because he could hold it. And he raised his left hand to the roof of my home rolled back. And we went out of my home in the sky. And, and I see scrolls as wide as that right there with God's written word, Psalms 91 written on it, in gold, big bold letters. And then all around my home were three ranks of angels. And it tells how the angels will watch over you. It tells how the angels will protect you. And these angels are three ranks. One is like a count. They're sitting around like a campfire, talking, not no real fire, but they're talking. The second rank of angels are like maybe seven foot tall, and they have wings. But the third rank are warfare angels. Jesus told me what they were later. 
The third rank were a 30 foot high. They had wingtip to wingtip, and they're the ones with the swords. And if any darkness came near my home, Jesus showed me they pull a sword and cremate that blackness into flames to protect us and our families. And then there'd be another scroll to come down out of the book of Malachi. Everything he showed me was his written word and how important to remember his word. And so we went high into the sky. And as I go up, I could see the angels watching over everything. And I got so high up, the galaxies, the earth was gone, but it was like a basketball. About biggest, it was even littler looking this table. And I'm standing with nothing under my feet but air. And Jesus says, look over there. And there was a circle of a thing, darling, like a tornado. But it was not moving like a tornado. It was hooked way down into the earth like a tunnel. And he said, those are gateways into hell. And he said, look, there's many of them. And then he showed me one children about as big as this place here made out of iron. The doors were two foot thick and there was a keyhole there. And there was written in God's word above it, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. See, God is watching over us because out of these gateways come demon powers. They, they're ordered by the enemy to attack us. But Jesus gave us his word. He gave us his sword. He wants you guys to be bold. Even if you don't know how to pray, just say Jesus. And the demons run 25 feet from you. They don't want you to know that. They're scared of you. Because the name of Jesus make them tremble. The name of Jesus knocks the devil off his throne. So this name said, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Jesus Christ, King of kings. Amen. And Lord of lords. And so... He says to me, he said, uh, Catherine, when you were a little girl, you, you were in Sunday school and you always wondered, how did David cut off Goliath's head? And I did. I was always asking my Sunday school teacher, how did this giant's head, how did this little man cut his head off? <laughs> the Lord showed me. He just did like that and a vision appeared. He showed me the war in those days. He showed me David and his slingshot. And how David prayed, and that thing hit the giant in the middle of the forehead. He was a giant. And Sister Chris, he fell to the earth, and he rumbled. So David had warriors with him. And they ran over, and they hacked his head off. It was big, with, a, with swords, and put it on a plate. I couldn't believe it. it and in hell, he's walking around with no head. Yeah, Goliath is down there. You guys, they used to be make beds 13 feet long. Do you know that? <laughs> We're kind of short, huh? There are no 13 footers in here. Think about God, though. Did you know that they just found not too many years ago these heads as tall as we are buried? Did you see who saw that on the internet? Everybody, it's real. How many seen it? You young kids did, didn't you? It's, it's really strange. They uncovered all these skeletons. The bones, one arm was maybe as tall as me. Their leg bones and their arm bones. They're, have you seen it, Pastor Chris? It's real. The arche, why do you say that? The archaeologists dug them up. How many raise your hand that saw that? You did, didn't you, honey? Didn't it blow your mind? They took pictures. One man was standing by a head. He came up just like where the eyeball of the head was, that big. They were the giants. So they were big, man. Yeah, weren't they? And it wasn't made up. It was real. And so God proves his word. Amen? So the Lord kind of smiled at me. He said, you always wondered about that. And he said, that was God's enemies. Yeah. And he, you know, he was teaching me. And he said, now, come on. We're going to go down this gateway, and you're going to get afraid. But he said, I got your hand. He said, now, look down all around this gateway. And we're like in the air over this big opening. He said, you see the walls. I said, yes, sir. There was a gray net in front of the wall, all around the wall. But in the wall was all kind of creatures. And George Bloomer is my friend. And he and I wrote three books together. He explained what those were. There was cockroaches 12 feet high. There was spiders 12 feet wide. There was everything creepy crawly in those, that net. And they could move. They were, and Jesus said, those are demons. And, and, and uh, George explains it in one of my books because God showed him 
that when we are out there serving Jesus Christ, the enemy wants our minds to be warped at times with the lust of our flesh, like perversion, pornography. Right, guys? You know this is the truth. Because, you know, people run around half naked. And no wonder the men, they need sunken blinders, you know. My kids' boys, I had three boys, and man, as always, I was getting after them. And uh, this is true. And the lust of that flesh rears up. So the Lord was showing me that Satan attacks our flesh. And he said, now these are, there's worse demons down further. And he said, some of them have four heads. They're like these crazy pictures you see in these magazines. They're really real. They have razors, black, like razors on the back of their hands that they rub that on them dead, them souls that are burning. And they scream and they scream. You would not believe how evil the devil is. So we go down the gateway and it gets hotter. And if you guys want to show that one scene where, or one of the scenes up there, I want them to see that place where people fall down like a half a mile into fire. That was years ago, 14 years ago. But pastor going to have copies here for all you guys. For your families, you can make copies and get them saved. There, there's a time right now we got to listen. The Holy Ghost wants you to be aware of what's far beneath our feet. They're going to show you another scene in a minute. There's a high cliff, guys, that were, there's a devil laughing and throwing you, uh, young souls that died. And there's no babies in hell. There's no little children in hell. God is merciful. There's absolutely no babies. And even the mental retarded, they're not there. The handy, oh, children. People that commit, you may laugh, but people that sometimes kill their self for demon possessed, they do not go to hell. Are you listening to me? Because they've been totally oppressed and deceived. God is merciful. You've got to hear me because some of you have had friends that committed suicide. Listen to me. God loves you. He does everything in his power to save you. If you premeditate your death, that's very dangerous. You will go to hell because you're in your right mind. You know what you're doing. You hear me? You, I'm not God. I'm not your judge. But God give us a body to take care of, sweetheart. He didn't want us to go to hell. But when you're walking with the Lord, like that scene you just saw there, Gary Greenraw paid a lot of money to do that video, I think 30000 And we were 13 hours making that video. And Bill Weiss had seen hell eight months before. And he said, the scene, that man falling, that's Kenneth Hagin's testimony. One of the great men of God. And uh, he actually, at 17, when he 17 or 18, saw hell. You didn't know that, right? Hagen. So what God is trying to tell us is in my story, you need to get that video. You need to hear this loaded with scriptures. You need to understand. You youth need to get it. Okay? Listen to it. Follow the word of God. Because there's far beneath our feet flames like that. There's drops of shoots where they're shaped like an open pasture, maybe from here to there, just a round circle, oblong like an egg, and it's black. And as you're there with Christ walking among the dead, you see skeletons falling down in heaps and heaps with a net over them. And then demons drag them and say, we deceived them. We deceived them. We deceived them to serve the devil. Oh, my. And, you know, look at all the people that died in that airplane crash last week. How many were born again? Think about it. And then in Honduras, uh, uh, Honduras, many years ago, an angel pulled my hand, woke me up in the night, pray, pray for Honduras, pray. And then that great uh, flood came, and they said even busloads of people were buried alive. Souls by the thousands all over this world, like you know, well, two years ago down there in China, and, and what was it over there by the, where that poison thing was? Thousands have died. And we, and prophets would say, I had a dream of all these, uh, 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 what was it called? Um, some kind of different nationality people were screaming and pulling on his hand, save us, save us. See, these are missionary works. Pastors and leaders got to go to countries. They took my, that, that in my book in South, I think South Korea, three years ago, and did a play, and 6,000 came to God in one day. 
in South Korea, and now there's a youth bro broke out. There's, when you watch TV, you see all the youth over there singing and praising and preaching the gospel. 18, 25, 30 years old on fire by the hundreds. God wants to do that here. He wants to change our thoughts, change our lives. So Jesus takes me down the gateway, and down we get hotter and hotter. I do. We get to the bottom, and I hear the voices of the dead. I hear people screaming. Help me. Won't somebody help me? I look to my right. There's a blackness like from that wall to here. And in the blackness is skeletons, like a skeleton on fire, screaming. And you could hear their voices. And they say, where am I? What is this? I cannot stop burning their flames. You look over here, you see fire from there to the wall. And in the fire, darling. Is all these skeletons screaming, I just died. Oh, my God, is this my life forever? And I began to cry. Christ began to cry, and I was in the spirit. No tears came. But Christ, his eyes was flooded with tears. And there's a pathway in front of us. He said, now this is the valley of the shadow of death. And we're going to walk on this, child. And we're going to go into the left leg of hell. Hell has a body in the middle of the earth and she's laying on her back and he said now the first place we're going to go is through the left leg and he said in the left leg are the pits in ezekiel the pits in revelation and in the pits are skeletons of every nation that have done a lifetime of sins and never repented they heard the gospel but never repented truly from their heart so I'm with Jesus, Pastor Chris, and I'm scared. I'm so scared. And I hear the cries of the dead by the every nation, a multitude. And he takes me by the hand, and we're walking. It's about this far to that wall. And there's a snake crawling by the pathway, big, big around as our bodies, about 30 feet long. And then on the other side of this pathway is a black thing on its stomach, a huge hairy thing. I don't know what it was. And then ahead of us, snakes actually crawled across. Snakes, real snakes. They were not spirits. And then you see rats from little two-pounders to 70-pound rats, real rats. You go further, and you see a wall full of sewers from sewers coming down into hell. You smell that. You smell burning flesh. You begin to cringe and you hear the gnashing of teeth. And you think, this is real. While I'm up on the earth, I never really thought about before beneath my feet was a living, burning hell. And I kept walking with Jesus and he was crying so hard. And he said, now child, we're going to get to a certain place and I'm going to let you stand there and I'm going to go and I'm going to speak to my father. And, and then I'll come back and get you. So I watched him walk in the left. We got into the left leg of hell, and there's thousands of these pits, thousands. And he made light so I could see, like, maybe where you guys are, I could see 10 miles the same way. And then he says to me, now, you're going to hear different stories, but I'm going to walk over here, and you stay here. And I'm standing there looking at all these corpses. And I didn't know if it was a man or a woman, Deborah. And they began to talk to Jesus, screaming at him. Some of them cursed him. Some of them uh, said, let me die. Why am I here? And, the, and he kept walking. He got so far, and then he raised his arms. He spoke in another language. All hell shook when he spoke. The demons ran backwards. He spoke. Hell shook. And then the fires that would be over their heads, children, came down around their ankles. And it was like they had a few seconds of not the flames covering them. And I said, Jesus, I thought in my heart, you had that calm down. And he said, come back to me. He said, there's no peace in hell. They don't know what peace is, child. Oh, Lord. And he said, come in here. Come and see what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. you got to have eyes to see and ears to hear. You got to realize, what if that was you burning in hell tonight? What if that was you that missed out on the Lord? And he came back to me and took me by my hand. 
and he came to and he began to walk so far. And I said, Jesus, how can you tell if it's a man or woman? He said, by their dialect, by their voices. And so we walked to where there was a skeleton burning, and it was a man's voice. He spoke. And he said, he called Jesus, Jesus, Lord. He said, Lord Jesus, I was going to preach the truth, but I was very prejudiced. I told the people, no uh, nationality is going to go to heaven but the white folks. He said, I was a liar and I knew it. And he said, prophets came to me and told me to repent. I wouldn't repent. He said, I was told by you, stop it and do not be evil and hate. And he said, the day I died, my soul was brought here. And I've been here ever since. And he had a make-believe book in his hand of fire. A fire. And he began to preach God's word, but nobody was listening. They were cursing him, telling him to shut up. We walked on, and then there was a woman. Uh, and here's what Christ would say to them. The judgment of my father's been set. It's too late. And they would say to him, Jesus... Let me tell you why I'm here. And he'd say to them, peace be still. Who are you? What are you doing here? What did you do to come here? Every one of me asked that. And they would say, well, I thought if I could go to church, one woman said I could seduce the men to get a husband. And the, the vice versa, you know, some of the men think that too. But the woman started talking to the Lord and he looked at her and said, you're still lying. He said, you're still are full of sin. You're burning. You're tortured. And that's the way they were. It's like every one of them had an excuse why they shouldn't be there. And they'd heard the gospel. Every one of them we talked to in that whole three hours. We walked and we seen and we heard the adulteresses, the fornicators, the backsliders of uh, adultery. Um, their torment. They would stand and the worms would come out of their bones and they would pull them out and scream and pull them out and scream and others would grow, crawl through the bones. I was in uh, Gainesville, Florida preaching one night and a lady heard about me and she came. She had a white shirt on down to here and she was African American and she's coming to hug me. She said, Mary, I got saved through your book. I was on the street in, on heroin and somebody put this book in my lap. And I read it, but two days later, I ended up in emergency. I was dying. She said my insides, I'm sorry to say it, they were coming out. And she said I was dead. I died on the table. And I'd read your book two days before, and I went down the tunnel. I went down below, and demons were saying, I deceived you. I destroyed you. You're devils. You're the devils now. And she said that she screamed, God save my soul. And when she did, she said they brought her back to life. She came back in her body. That happened to her three times. And, and she rolled her sleeves up before their whole church. She had holes, scars where their worms had dug on her bones that quick. She showed them to us. You could put the pencil in the hole. It was horrifying. Horrifying. And we don't know this, you see. The devil don't want you to know this. He wants you to think, oh, go ahead and get drunk. Go ahead and beat your wife, beat your husband. He wants you to beat your children. He wants you to live like anything you want to do, do it. You cannot do that. God give you a body. He said, I made you in my image. Sweetheart, we're coming to the knowledge right now. Bill Weiss and I, you want to get ready another scene, honey, and show it? Uh, when you get this, purchase it from the church to help the church. You got to give an offering or whatever they set up. But you guys need this. You make copies, make copies, give them away. You got to revive your family. Okay, gang? Maybe a pastor and have one night, you all come in him showing it here for you or something. But he's, they're going to get another scene, honey. Go ahead and get another one. And uh, thrown down there. When we were walking in hell about the 10th night, where the hell has a belly, okay, sweetheart? 17 miles of those kind of fire in those jail cells. 17 miles high. A dirt ledge comes out. And Jesus and I walked on the ledge. And he would stop in front of one of them gates. And he'd say, what are you doing here? There'd be a skeleton burning. They would tell their story. And they said, we thought if we served the devil, we would never die. 
And Jesus said, I'm the word of God. I give you life eternal, not the devil. And then you see and you hear voices far below in the bellies of circle three miles around. You see a coffin of a man's skeleton with real blood on his hand. And he's screaming. And all around the coffin, this really I saw was demons about the size of that little wing thing. Stabbing the soul. Children on his hands was real blood. And Christ's like power took him right by it. He said, Catherine, ask me what this is. I said, Jesus, what is this? He said, he blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I said, God, what's that mean? He said, I want you to tell my people. Everything he showed me, Jesus wanted you to know and me. He said, he was a preacher of my word. For 25 years, he tasted like Jesus did of the gifts. He tasted like Judas did of the glory. But what he did, he let the devil enter his heart. And he began to teach lies against the Bible. He began to teach against the Holy Ghost. He said, tell my people that if they tasted my goodness, they've served me to stay on the, the pathway, the holy pathway. He said, he began to lie to the congregation. He began to steal money from the church. He began to teach lies instead of holiness. And he knew better. He said, he knew better. And God spoke to him and said, he said, oh man, I know why you're here. And the man began to weep and you know, tears came. He's a skeleton. He screams such blood curdling screams that I remember him today. And when the scientists drill the hole nine feet into the earth overseas, that same voice came up that hole. It was him being tormented night and day and then thrown in a lake of fire to burn for eternity. Your soul never dies. We have a body, guys, that we got to take care of as best we can. But these are real souls I'm telling you about. These are real, used to be real people walking on the earth like you. And there's... There's absolutely no exits. And I'm looking at all this, and over here, Jesus said, there's caves, daughter. Caves on the walls over there. And the demons are laughing and busy making more caves to bring more souls. He said, now this was what I want the people to know. That's what you call blaspheme in the Holy Ghost. He said, it's not when you're young and don't know any better. He said, this man knew better. He said, it's not where you accidentally, when you're a sinner, swear. He said, it's not that. He said, this man deliberately, willfully blasphemed the Holy Ghost. He's the power that gives you to heal the sick and raise the dead. So we, I'm going to tell you another place we went to. We left that place. We went to the jaws, the, the jaws of hell. I looked down, the earth guys moved and shifted. It's like an earthquake happened. And Jesus said, hell just enlarged herself to hold more souls. And he looked at me and said, child, I love you. I saw souls coming down by the hundreds, piles of skeletons screaming. And I looked for Jesus. He wasn't there. And demons, huge demons Real, you could see them. They were big. I had a net dragging them in front of me, and you could hear them talk. One man said, I was in the hospital. I cursed the pastor and run him off, and I died, and here I am. Another one said, my family told me to repent, but I mocked them and scoffed them. Another one said, oh, my God, I was a harlot, and I heard the missionaries and preachers told me to repent, but I didn't. Every conversation was of the Bible, of the works of their flesh. And the demons were saying, we deceived you, shut up. You're, you're the devils now. You're going to be placed in chambers of horror. And I said, oh, my God. And then I saw another part of hell when Jesus came back. He was only gone a few seconds. He was there, okay. I didn't see him. I could feel him, but I didn't see him. That was one time. And he said, come, child, I want to take you to another section. And we went to another part of hell. And it was on a high mountain. And we sat on a rock. And we looked in a valley. They had to be at least a million skeletons burning 
and screaming, let us die, let us die. Then he said, behold and look, the manipulators over here. There was a mud thing, Pastor, like as high as your building, all mud in a circle. And each the mud at the top came out, and it slid down, and in all the mud was skeletons. And Jesus said, this is the judgment of my father upon manipulators that manipulate you, lie to you, and try to get your money, try to get you to cheat, to steal, to sin. Their torment is beyond belief. There's a river that, that flows into a mud all through. Hell, they're screaming and swimming in that mud. There's another torment he said he wanted to show me. It was a, um, a fiery river, fire. We went down to that, and the skeletons are screaming, reaching their hands up, and they're echoing through the chambers of hell. And in them is written God's word, lovers of their own flesh more than God's commandments. Men loving men. Women loving women with no fear of God. It's scriptures. And they were screaming and chained with a big black chain. And the Lord said that chain is added to every day. And they would scream and blame the church. Why didn't the church warn us? Why didn't somebody tell us to repent of our sins? And as they're listening to their voices, men and women, Jesus said, look and behold, the judgment of my father has been set. He said, it's too late for these thousands. He said, that's why I'm showing you hell. That's why I'm awakening you to understand your mandate, to let the world know hell is real. And then he said, in the book of Galatians, we're going to go there, Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 17. And this is who goes to hell. You think Okay, it's okay to say you love Jesus and live in the world, but he wants to give you the Holy Ghost to bring you out, to give you the power to stand. Okay, guys? And it says, for the flesh lusts is against the spirit. Here he's talking about the works of the flesh. If you were a liar, a thief, a harlot, a drug dealer, or uh, you murdered people or stole, he's telling you to stop it and repent and turn to God. He will deliver you. He will set you free. But it's a war, you see. But he gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost to overcome those temptations, children. It's a battle. In verse 19, these are the works of the flesh. Adultery. Everybody knows what adultery is, and probably everybody in here has been in adultery at one time. And God, you repented, right? And God's cleaned you up. But there's adultery against God. A spiritual adultery. Like you're so full of lust and and you can't seem to overcome. You need the, the elders to pray for you and anoint you with oil and deliver you from those powers of darkness or spirits or whatever's tormenting you. It's real. We need deliverance at times. You can't do it alone. If you don't have this corporate anointing working for you, standing for you, you're out there all alone. And buddy, you're going to sink. You need people that love you just as you are and hate to see in your end. Do you hear me? Not to, we all been there. We've all done crazy things. You're, you weren't born an angel with a halo and wings. Children, you had to go through trials, right, God? And then it says, here's what they're doing. It says, uh, verse 19, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. Now look at where hatred is, right, by witchcraft. Do you hate somebody tonight? You better repent. No matter what they did to you, you got to forgive them. Let God judge them. God don't want you to go to hell because you're full of hatred for somebody. Amen? It's real. you got to repent, sweetheart. Okay. And then we're talking about verances, emulations, raft. In heaven, when I was recuperating, I had a sabbatical a couple years ago. The Lord showed me something in the galaxies about strife and raft. He took me up and he showed me thrones and dominions in the galaxies. And he said, I'm going to show you the spirit of strife. He said, 350 demons work with the spirit of strife. When you have battles in your home, you lose your temper. And you get mad or you go out and you get drunk and you get in a, a car wreck or you go to jail, you go to the hospital, you end up losing how many years of your life to get it back together because the devil made you get angry. That old demon caused strife. 
It's better to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles and leave your situation. If you've got to go drive, drive. If you've got to get away, baby, get away. I tried to teach my sons that, to battle their flesh. They've got to fight that flesh. Amen, guys. It ain't just going to happen. You've got to do something about it. And you say, God, I need you, God. So when he showed me the spirit of strife and 350 demons working with him, it was scary how people get attacked. You know, your jobs, you have no money. They get in a rut. And they end up really having a hard life. We've all been there, right? You guys, a lot of you have been there. And a lot of you are still going through that. But the main thing the devil will do will send somebody to aggravate you. Somebody to rub you the wrong way. Am I telling you the truth? Especially you men, you want to knock them out, right? And, and it's not, you don't fight against flesh and blood. These are demons forcing, and they want the people to cause this chaos. Everybody, if you look at the police department, how many police officers in here? How many we have in here? None of you guys are police officers. Yeah, you know, sir, that when a fight starts at home, everybody's, everybody, when you get there, they're scared, and they blame it on the other one, don't they? Or home, home problems. There have been more deaths lately down in Florida, a lot of home domestic violence. And in it, like the little babies they found dead, and all kind of crazy stuff. And, and we have to recognize you're in a war against the devil. You're in a war to let you take your flesh and step on it. Say, I'm not doing that today. Hey, God, I'm going to serve you. I've got a made up mind. I'm going to get rid of this rotten flesh. And you're going to make it. You've got to do it. You've got to mean it. Because he's not a man, he will lie. When you give him your mind, your heart, your soul, your spirit, his power comes on you. He helps you overcome. But he gives us the gift of the Holy Ghost to help us overcome the works of our flesh. Hear me? It's not a fairy tale. God knew we couldn't walk this walk. He knew we couldn't talk this talk. Sweetheart, without the gift and the power of God. And that power comes in you, you change. How many is in here? To have the Holy Ghost. Raise your hand. Wow. How many of you, when you know your husband's in trouble, go shanda la la la, start praying. Your children, you know your, your somebody, your grandchildren are hurt. You start praying in your tongues. You call an intercessor that prays with you in tongues, right? Because your heart, you're speaking, God show me, straight to God. Those tongues are a language that he understands and a lot of other people too. But like the prophetess this morning, when she got slain, the lady in the music, she was under travail to bring forth another word to the church. What if she didn't obey God? What if she just said, I don't believe that? But what she did, the power of the Holy Ghost shook her. She obeyed God, right? She didn't do it for herself. She did it for the word of God to go forth like a sword and cut away the doubt and the unbelief. When I went home today, I said, Lord, there's some strong doubts in that place. And there's pitiful people, Lord, that love you, but they don't understand. What do we do about it? And he said, you just pray for them. I'll do the work. And, and that's right, honey, because we get stubborn. We, get, we do. Tell the truth. We get aggravated. This is not an easy walk sometimes, guys. But you've got a great church, great pastor. You got a man and women, the staff, everyone is so precious. They love you. They've been there. They know the heartaches you've been through. They care about you. So this is what God wants to, me to say to you today. If we can save a neighbor from going to hell, and that's another thing. <clears throat> In hell, they blame you for not inviting them to church. What does the devil do the first time you think about inviting your neighbor? What's he tell you? Oh, he'll think you're crazy. He'll think you're a holy roller. Oh, you're not dressed right today to go tell him to come to church. You hear me? Isn't that what he tells us? You know he does. Oh, wow. Well, we feel the Lord come in. Let's be sensitive to God. Let's right now bow our heads to him. I want the men, while we're bowing our heads, to get another scene for hell out of that, for the people to see. Oh, my. He said, I'm taking scales off your eyes. I'm taking the blackness from your minds. I'm touching your precious hearts to revive you.
saith the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You would like to show another scene? You can, honey. You may think that's a fairy tale. There's a place in hell I'm going to tell you about that will really shake your tree. I was down there with the Lord. <clears throat> now remember, he shut my mind up. 30 years went by, and he didn't open up my mind to a few years ago. I was in Redding, California on a sabbatical, and he opened up my heart, and I fasted 11 days and prayed. And he opened up my heart. He said, child, I'm going to show you, bring back to your remembered scenes of hell. And in one of the scenes, we're, we're in hell. And there's a high cliff with Satan sitting on a throne like that. And it, there's stair steps, seven stair steps, real wide like the stage. And over to my left and over to the right, Jesus said, we're going to walk up the stairway and we're going to go see what Satan's doing. And said, you're going to tell the people what he's doing. Children, I went up this first step with Jesus. I stopped. Over here was the world, like a scene in a garage sale, like on the earth. Over here were demons planning that, that you know, the one running in the garage sale was a sinner. And they had a list how they were going to seduce people at that garage sale. Now think about this. And the next step was a bar. A bar. There was a bar, excuse me. There was actually a town bar. And they were people falling off the bar stools. And then there would be real demons manifested, whispering in their ears. And over here on the other side, they were planning to attack those people in the bars. This was what I saw. And there was mud and muck running down the stairs full of worms. We went to the third step. And the Lord said, take heed. Over here was demons planning to attack the youth, our American youth. <clears throat> it showed over here an earth scene of young men and women in going into witchcraft. He showed them going into that Wicca. He showed them being enticed to go and do wicked things in the streets. It showed demons with needles, demons with uh, some kind of acid stuff. And appeals popping in their hands. Show me the earth scene in the earth. And he said, these demons are planning to attack the youth. And then we go up another step, Pastor. Every step was horrifying. Seven steps. Then he showed me a scene of the church. He showed me, I think it was the fifth step. And over here he showed me a scene of a church service. The this message the pastor preached was cut and dry. There was no life in it, no hope, no repent and be saved. He was talking in a monotone, and he was telling the people, you can do anything you want. God loves you. He understands. You Once you got born again, you're saved forever. This was a lie he was teaching the people. Yes, he showed me several church scenes. There's a church... In Alabama, I think it's Montgomery, Alabama, has 700 members that the pastor's boyfriend sits on the front row. You guys, and I don't know how they get the money. They got limos and rich cars, and everybody goes dressed to the tilt in these churches. And so a pastor took me by and said, Mary, go in and give that pastor a book on hell. <laughs> For real, he did. I said, why don't you go do that? <clears throat> why put me in the middle? So that's what they do. They use me, you know. And the mayor, really, there's one town, Maryland gave me, the mayor gave me an award for coming and preaching hell to the people. It's time, you wake up, baby doll. And, and there's things that the devil uses. The Lord showed me in this hell scene. So we're going up another step. And over here, Pastor, is little graves of children. Graves in a graveyard. And over here, there's these demons planning to abort the babies that are called to be prophets and apostles and ministers. 
They got a plan to seduce the women and men to destroy the unborn. It breaks your heart. It's the devil. He's planning, you know, he's done it. How many millions of babies, unborn babies have died? How many? In years. And now they, Jesus, when he gets their little soul in heaven, he makes them holy. I saw him create a child. I saw him breathe into the mouth of a little nine-month baby, and it came alive, kicking just like Adam came alive. Think, he's the creator. Jesus Christ created us in his image. My Lord. I got to wait on the Lord. Oh, boy. He's giving me a scripture about that man in hell. It's in Galatians. Don't turn there, though. I was going to tell you. It's in Galatians 4, verse 8. How bet then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. Okay, we all used to sin, he's saying. But now, after that you've known God, or after that you have known of God, or rather are known of God, why turn again to the weak and uh, the, what do you call it, Be- elements wherein you desired again, otherwise the lust of your flesh, to be in bondage. You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labors in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as you are. You have not injured me at all. You know now after infirmities of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you. Children, if God was to appear here right now in a human form, he would shake your tree. All of us would be on our faces crying out to him. If Almighty God chooses to take a human being, a woman into hell and walk her among the dead, take Bill Weiss, and we did that video, we couldn't get a scene of him, but he's on there, where he got beat, he got bitten by demons. He was a music leader at Gary Greenwald's church, and he asked God to show him a love of God, a compassion, and other things he wanted. And one night, God picked Bill up and threw him, just threw him down into hell. He was beat by demons in the head. He was terrorized. He was screaming, and they tried to kill him. And he asked Jesus later, why did they do that to me? And they said they hate anybody because they're in the likeness of Jesus Christ. He made us in his image. And they don't want you to live. They want to destroy you. And many other things when Bill is talking about his journey into hell. Jesus wasn't with him. But Jesus allowed it. And how his wife told me it took days for him to be normal again. I had to go to the emergency room. I was seeing hell so bad. I cried so much I threw up blood. From seeing the souls. Souls that have no more tomorrow. The Lord showed me Satan sitting on his throne. And he showed him to me, Pastor, laughing like that picture. He said he had a list. He had a big list. And he had all these demons come up. And he had a throne there. And then on the left, the light came. And there was skeletons in chains. And skeletons brought before him. And the Lord, the, the Lord said, look at the evil of Satan. He said, those are my fallen preachers that got bewitched and bewildered and backslid. Said, tell my people to pray for them. And they would stand in line with change like in the backs of them. And they would come and have to bow to the devil. And the devil would order his demons to torture them. They had a wall full of torture instruments. And they would go over like one thing had all kind of razor blades on it. So you feel like you have a real body in hell. You feel it. You, you think it just like the rich man. You believe. And you for sure, you believe when you go to hell. And they'd have to bow to the devil. And the devil had a record of their life. The very day he deceived them. The very day he sent trouble their way. The very day they backslid. And how hell broke loose on them not to come back to God. It was recorded. The devil had it. And he said, you were supposed to have been a great prophet of God. 
but I stopped you. I deceived you. He said, you didn't listen. And then, then they would he'd order tortures. That they would actually, you ain't going to believe this, but I know it's real. I saw it, and it was confirmed to me by a prophet that she saw it too. They pulled his bones apart. And every bone out of that body screamed for the other. And they took and buried him all over hell. This is real. And God's mercy would shake hell and it all come back together again. I was in California preaching. We had a revival like 10 days. And I was so tired of preaching. And God sent a prophetess the last night to preach for me. I lost my voice. She said, Mary, I saw hell. Said I heard one night the devil was attacking my family. I was praying, and Jesus came and said, "Come, I want to show you something." He took her down a flight of stairs, and chains were dragging. Demons were dragging chains, laughing, belittling, and you could hear weeping and gnashing of teeth. And took her down this flight of stairs, and he said, "Look, I want to show you how my fallen servants are tortured." And she saw the same thing, and she said that. God was that Jesus and them was interceding in heaven and he would shake hell. God would shake hell and look in it for and shut it up and open it up and he would make that come back together. The same thing I saw. You don't want to backslide. If you're backslid here today and you're called to preach, you better repent. You better. I was 13 years before, after God called me, before I ever preached. I had to take care of my kids. My family. All you got to do is accept your call. And then there's that time when each one, you know, I couldn't take it anymore. Neither could Jesus. We left. And Jesus said to me, child, there's other sections in hell. I want to take and show you something that I've never shown anybody. So we were translated with his power back to a, a dark hole in hell, a dark portion. I was so scared and I was so tired. I said, Lord, what is this? He said, you're going to see something. You're going to tell my people how Satan works. And then he, he just did his hand that way. And there I saw again the earth. I saw the cities. I saw the towns. I saw demon powers big as bears walking. They would come around you. You couldn't see them. They'd whisper to you. Then there'd be another one over here pulling to you. They were attacking your flesh because you weren't real. You weren't going to any church. You were out there an open shot for the devil. And he showed me what happens. He showed me a list, a list that they always would read from because you were chosen of the Lord. When you're born, you have a mark, an invisible mark on your forehead. You hear me? You're marked of God. The devil can see that. I know this. And it's the name of our God, our God, New Jerusalem. This is what I want to tell you. The Jews, how many Jews are in here today? Born again Jews. Oh, wow. I have a, my spiritual son is a born again Jew. And I've learned so much from him about the Jewish laws and the love. And they don't know Jesus. A lot of the rabbis, you know that and stuff. But when they get Jesus, the knowledge they have in the Old Testament will blow your mind. And it works. So you hear me? When you're serving God, that works. You never throw away the Old Testament. Never. It goes with the new. Never give up. It, we're not under the old covenant law. But if God said something, he meant it, he did it. He parted the sea, didn't he? He appeared to Moses in a burning bush, didn't he? He meant it. He did things to get our attention. So when we're talking in hell, Jesus is getting my attention. He said, look, learn, and listen. He said, this is how Satan deceives people. He gives them a taste of their flesh, the feeling good. The excitement of the drugs, excitement of pornography, he lets them feel that. The devil does that to draw you away from God. And he loves it. He laughs because he's lost his kingdom. The devil was crushed under the feet of Jesus Christ. His days are numbered. If you read in Ezekiel, God numbered his days. It's real. Someday God's going to destroy him. 
He's going to burn for a thousand years. You wait and you see. We have to realize this same God today is trying to shake us awake with these revelations. He's trying to say to us, awake, awake, you that sleepeth. You have eyes to see and ears to hear, but you're not doing it. And he said, I want my spirit to awake you. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking about outer darkness. I'm going to be talking to you about the kingdoms of darkness. How we have the power in the name of Jesus to destroy that. We have the power in the name of Jesus to pull down those kingdoms. We have the authority in the name of Jesus to stop all of these demons whispering to you. We have the authority. God gave it to us. The dominion over these darkness and we're not using it. That's why we're knocked every which way. You know, if you men get mad and mecked in a corner, you come out fighting, don't you? Right? You got to knock the devil out. Don't be afraid. Use his name like a boxer. Take the authority God give you and say, hey, devil, I ain't listening to your lies. Devil, I rebuke you by the blood of the lamb. And angels go to work with your words to tear down the devil's kingdom. Angels fight for you with the sword of the word of God. Angels walk amongst you. They're saying, hey, we're here, man. Let us go to work for you. They wait for God to command them to work for you. But you can ask God, hey, my angels need to be acted today. They need to, and I need to open my mouth and speak. You, you got to open your mouth. It may be in your heart, but you got to rise above that fear. Rise above that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to lay down here and die. He'll kill you. He'll lay you out, man. The devil will. Oh, yeah. The life of Christ is within us, and God wants that to shine. We have the authority to raise the dead. You hear me? God's used me to raise two dead people and birds and animals, but it's not the holy thing you think it is. It is so funny that I was in a hospital, and I went up there to pray for my cousin that was in a cult. She had lost a baby 25 years ago. Her name was Wanda. And I and her had a big argument because she came to my home and the Lord said, you're going to have a baby on Labor Day. And I was young in prophecy. And I said, oh, my God, let me be a liar and let God be true. She said, yeah, you're a big liar. I'm going to have my baby. Uh, I'm already three months pregnant. I said, okay, praise God. She was going to a medium that tells her her future. And I was rebuking her. Me and my cousin went around and around, Wanda. And so her husband called me late, months later in that time. He said, Kathy, can you come to the hospital? Wanda wants to see you. She came in here last night, and she miscarried the baby. Now, think of this as God's mercy. Her baby is gone. And I said, oh, Lord, I felt sorry for her. He said, come up tomorrow and talk to her and pray for her. So I went to Detroit. I was in Detroit then. I went to the big hospital in Detroit. Me and my sister wore white that day. We're going in the hospital, and we're looking for Wanda's room, and then all at once we hear a scream from a room, and the voice, the, the nurse scream said, this lady's dying. I don't know. It was really scary. So I went in, and me and my sister, my sister ran out of the room, but I stayed, and I prayed for her, and she quit gurgling, and, and she uh, started sleeping. So I just left, and on the way out, the other roommate screamed, uh, this lady had been dead. She died and was gurgling, and a nurse came in. He saw I was a nurse and prayed for her and said, I saw black demons all around her bed, and she was scared. That's the one that was screaming, the lady next door to her in the bed, same room. And I was in awe because all I did was obey the Lord. So I came out of the room, and I'm walking to see my cousin. And I heard the words, I am the creator. And all at once, guys, I totally disappeared. I was young. At the, I felt the power of Jesus in me so strong. My sister said my eyes even changed color. And I went into my cousin's room. She's laying there crying. I never said a word. I went over and laid my hands on her stomach. And underneath my hand, power, creator power began to move. And God gave her back her baby. It was born on Labor Day, just like God said. My cousin today, she named her daughter Thomasina. She's 25 because she doubted God. And my, oh yeah, many creative miracles like that. And we went back down the hall 
And that woman in there is awake, and we were shocked. And, you know, for, they said a few days later she died, though, went on to heaven. But we led her through the sinner's prayer. And there's things, another lady died by me preaching one day. I was sitting by this lady, and, and her nephew was preaching in my mother-in-law's church in Pennsylvania. And you know how everybody thinks you give this deep voice, and you do this and that. So she's by me, and she's like in her 90s, and she straightens out. And I said, oh, my God, she's dying. And I said to her nephew, it was crazy. I said, I was trying to get his attention. And I said, hey, you're, you're, uh, I think your aunt or grandma just died. The whole church got up and run out the door. And my mother, it's hilarious. My mother-in-law's there with me. And an odor came out of her like hell. And I said to myself, she ain't saved, man. And she's laying on there, and her nephew's giving her mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. I go in the bathroom to get the room deodorizer, and I start just praying it around her. And my mother-in-law comes out, said, you crazy nuts. Said, we got to call her soul back in her body. So she had us lay hands on me and her, and we commanded her soul to come back in her body. But I was so upset over the odor, I couldn't pray. I said, Ma, you do it. And she stunk. Oh, Jesus. They called an ambulance. They put her on the gurney, and they covered her up, and then her arm moved. So they got her off the gurney. The paramedics, they said, you got to sign this paper. She said, no, I'm not dead. I'm alive. And I said, and yeah, you stink. I said, it, was, it wasn't a holy thing at all. And I said, you're not saved. You're getting saved right now. So I led her to the Lord on the gurney and she ma says okay calm down she says what did you do she said well i floated in the ceiling watching you and said when you commanded my soul to come back in my body i had to obey and i zapped right back in and that's how she woke up on the gurney and we put her in the back of a station wagon, took her to perkins you know we give her soup and a sandwich and <laughs> It wasn't hilarious at all, but she got saved, you know. I used to work with a power team, son, you know, John Jacob on them big guys, and they would grab these men and hold them up, make them go through the 12 steps. <laughs> Ken used to make them, Ken Henderson, he said, you got to say the 12 steps. He was so big and powerful, he would knock them out, you know. He said, I used to knock them out and tell them they got to get saved. Because he read my, an angel brought him my cassette tapes years ago in California. And he, he made his brother get saved. The whole drug dealers get saved. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bill and Ken Henderson, they're my buddies. And them men are so big. You don't mess with them, boy. You do not mess with them. And, uh, and he, them, he, said, he said, Mom, we used to terrify them, boy. And they had these big black put dogs. What are they? Them big black dogs with big teeth. Yeah, they had them with them, you know, because they're wild, hairy men, you know. And he said the day he got saved in the shower, said this voice said, cut your hair too. Said, you look like a caveman. And he, he said he got saved in the shower, received the Lord. And he went and cut his hair off and he went to the drug dealer house. He said, okay, guys, I'm going to beat you up if you don't receive Jesus Christ. He got them all saved. And his brother did a funeral. He had to go buy a suit at the Goodwill. They were so crazy. And he didn't know how to preach to the family. So he went and got gospel tracts and put in the dead woman's hand in the casket. And he said, he said I'm going to get you saved some way. My brother scares me to death. And Bill's really, he's out there today going and preaching and evangelizing. And he said, boy, did they, they'd come and creep and pull a track out and take off. And he said, I had this little tight penguin suit on, and I looked like a caveman. I didn't know how to preach a funeral. But we loved her, and we talked about how much we loved this lady like a mother to him. And I learned through those men, I'm telling you, they don't mess around when they get Jesus. If they've been drug dealers, they've been out there, man, they do the switch. You better watch out, world, because they're real. They don't play around anymore. They don't be wishy-washy. And I've been in prisons with them guys. We, we were in Miami prison. I'll never forget it, Bill and Ken and I. 
And they got sick as they could be before we went in, you know. And I said, hey, guys, quit that throwing up. We got to get in there and save these rascals. So we, we make fun out of it because we got to have fun. So we go in there, and here's all this side, the prisoners with lipstick on and bana- bandanas, t- a little twisty. Look, at, they, were, they were, you know, look like whatever. And over here's a big muscle macho men, you know, and they're all cussing each other. Across and here comes the prison guard, and here's Ken and Bill and I telling them about hell. We, you know, preaching hell to these guys, and uh, all their these flirty guys quit flirting. They stopped wiping their lipstick off and taking their bandanas, whatever they was, off, and they started coming to the altar. They were really afraid Bill was going to beat them up. Really, they afraid. And they heard me talking about eternity and burning hell and skeletons. They got saved, man. All them men was getting saved because God sent us into them prison. Bill Henderson and Ken took my tape on death row and made them inmates on death row listen to my tape of a burning hell. He showed it on Trinity. For the first time they were allowed to go on death row, they got 60 men saved at chain zone on death row. Yeah, so we got to know this is real, guys. It's not a plaything. So you today have a chance to turn your lives around, honey. You men and women that are chosen of the Lord, don't play around anymore. I know there's a bunches of you that are called to sing, called to preach, called to pray. And you keep doing everything else and putting God over in a box. So when you get ready to serve him, you take him out of the box. And you say, okay, I need this today. I need that. Lord, give me this. Give me that. Don't you? Tell the truth. You better tell the truth. Because I used to do that. It's so scary to be so stupid. I'm sorry, guys. It is. We're, we are playing with Almighty God. He has to shake our tree. He has to take us and show, him, show us hell. He has to show us heaven. He loves us so much that... He looks, sits back and smiles at us. And tonight there was bands of your angels up there and, and the porthole open of those that went on before you and your families looking at you with new bodies, no pain, no sorrow, no crying in heaven. And God said that tonight he wants you to think on this message. He wants you to think in your mind right now. Close your eyes a second. The reason I say that is not that we're so high and mighty. It's just don't look around. You don't have to, Pastor, the leaders, but you out there, you don't need nobody paying attention to you. You want to be alone with God. you got to make an altar in your heart right where you're at, and you got to make a choice. You're at the crossroads of your life. Some of you came a long way for this service. A lot of you young men in here, God needs you in his army, honey. He needs you to die to stop souls from going to hell. All you got to do is love them, pray for them, and know that if those big burly men could do it, you can do it. Whoo. Thank you, God. I hear the Lord saying, Pastor Chris, come up here with me, Pastor Chris. There is a pearls in here of great price. You've been through so much and you've wondered, God, I just don't want to live no more. I don't want to face the world the next day. Some of you are pearls. You're in the rough. You're in the the sand, baby doll. Some of you here tonight, God wants to renew your hope. He wants to renew your spirit tonight, babies. You've struggled and struggled, and every battle in hell has come against you. But I believe tonight there's going to be a renewal of pearls of great price. Some of you don't understand. Some of you do. But you feel that hush in the spirit? That's God. He's got you right where he wants you. He's got your attention. Oh, dear God. Mm. 
We got to love one another. You got to look at your neighbor and say, oh my God, what if that was me and I wasn't saved and I died in a car wreck or had a heart attack? Where would I go? We have an eternity, babies. And I tell you, with much love, hell is real. I believe the Holy Ghost is speaking that some of you need to come at His altar and renew your life tonight on Palm Sunday. And the joy and the thing you've missed, baby, will be returned. Oh, I feel His wholesome love. He said, this is a sobering message. It sobers you up and thinks, oh my God, what if I miss the Lord? So God wants you right now sitting in your seats. Check out your heart. Say, God, do I need to renew myself tonight? Honey, he loves you. If you have any doubt, if the trumpet blew tonight and you wouldn't go to be with the Lord, you come down and pray at this altar. And clean your little hearts up with God, your minds. Some of you need deliverance. Some of you you men are in pornography. And you know, honey, that's the old devil. He wants to take your mind off the precious things of God, sweetheart. And he wants you to know he loves you. And it's attack of the devil on your soul, sweetheart. I hear God saying, come while the waters are stirred. If we can get some music. And I really want you to come to this altar tonight. Pastor's going to help me. And I want you to feel free. This church, they're not, you know, they're not here to make you join this church. They want you to hear wherever you come from. And they want you to know your love. That's what it's all about. That's why the disciples preach the gospel. That's why they said when the waters are stirred, he wants you to come. So we're going to do that tonight. Can we stand up just quietly and come down to this altar? We're going to deal with the preliminaries later, but the, come on down as you stand up. Come on down here and kneel. Pray for your families. Pray for your loved ones and just take your place and really call out to God. Don't be quiet. Deborah, come on down and pray for your lost uh, nephew. You got lost children that are going to hell. Come, oh, God bless you, children. Look at these children. Oh, wow, look at the youth coming. It's going to be a new day, guys. Look at the youth, Pastor. Go ahead and help me, Pastor. 